guys, Jeff the Nature Guy here at Zoo Montana on a beautiful summer day, and I want to introduce you to my newest, I'm going to say it, pet. Now, can plants be pets? I don't know, but I'm going to say it because this thing, it seems like it's more than a plant. It, it's, it's weird. It's almost like it's got a life of its own. I'm talking about a Venus flytrap. I think it's one of the coolest plants in the entire animal kingdom because of how they operate. Now, of course, you probably have all heard of a Venus flytrap. These guys obviously eat bugs, so they're going to eat a lot of flies, a lot of arachnids, things like that. But I've done a lot of studying on these guys and I got some pretty cool things I want to tell you. The first of which always surprises people and that's the fact that Venus flytraps are only found in the United States. I know, everybody thinks these have to be some kind of crazy jungle animal that you're going to fall into and get eaten. No, they're only found in North and South Carolina and get this, they're actually almost close to being an endangered species. There's only about 300,000 individual plants left in that part of the world. So we're very fortunate to have this little one here in front of us and I can't wait to watch it grow. These things can live about 30 years if they're cared for properly. But what makes the Venus flytrap so cool is how they eat their food. So obviously these guys are going to be like a typical plant. They're going to photosynthesize just like a plant does. They need the sunlight obviously and they need watering, but they need extra protein, extra food. And that's where these little leaves on the top come into play. They almost look like they have little teeth. And what's so cool is when a bug flies in, we're going to get close in so you can see this. A bug's going to fly in and inside their little mouth that's what I'll call it, they have sensory hairs. And when those sensory hairs are touched, it's gonna indicate to this plant it's time to close that mouth. But here's the cool part. That sensory hair has to be touched two times in 20 seconds in order for the mouth to close. The reason that is, if a raindrop hits it, it's not worth the energy expenditure for this guy to close its mouth. And so it needs to be closed, touched twice to know it's something living inside of that mouth. Now on top of that, when that mouth closes, those little teeth, they're going to stay pretty close together, but not that close. That way small bugs can crawl out to safety because get this, this little plant doesn't want to digest something small, again, not worth the energy expenditure. It wants a big juicy fly and obviously if that fly cannot get out of those teeth, then it's worth obviously this thing digesting it. But here, here's where it gets even weirder is if that fly is in there, obviously it's alive, it's going to struggle that's going to push this little guy to digest faster. And what's going to happen is it's going to seal. You can actually see one of these right now. It's sealed. It becomes a sealed stomach. The digestive juices start to flow and that thing starts to digest. And after about 12, maybe 14 hours, that fly becomes nothing more than just its exoskeleton. It opens up and it spits it out. And next thing you know, this thing is, well, it's got a lot of good protein in it. How crazy cool is that? I just think it is a fascinating plant. And again, hoping to have this thing for quite a long time. So maybe it's going to get bigger. Hopefully it doesn't turn into a little shop of horrors thing where it eats me one day. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Guys, until next time, I am Jeff the Nature Guy with my new Venus flytrap.